Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Armory game engine. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, you might be thinking, ha, ah, about bloody time. And this is a game engine that when it first came out, I was all over it. Anytime there was a new release, I did a video about it. In fact, I did a very in-depth tutorial series all about Armory. Armory is a very interesting project, and I've had my eyes on it from day one. So then why haven't I covered it in a while? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. The, the recent past of Armory and the upcoming future of Armory. So first off, if you're interested in checking out Armory, you can grab... Um, it's available. It's an open source uh, game engine. Uh, it's built on top of Blender. That's the part that makes it really, really kind of cool. You develop your game directly inside of Blenders. Your materials are the same that you use with the Cycles renderer. Your models are already there. There's no export process because you're working directly inside of the same tool that you use to create your models. And in a lot of ways, you could look at this as a natural replacement for the now deprecated Blender game engine. It's a very cool project, and it is also the underpinnings of Armor Paint. We're going to get back to that one in a minute, because that's a big part of this story. Um, so Armory 3D is available at armory3d.org, um, and if you're interested in learning it, right off the hop when it was first released, I did a uh, multi-part tutorial. It covers you through most of what you need to know to at least start making your game. Um, it hasn't changed a whole lot, at least not yet. Uh, so most of this tutorial should still be relevant. The cool thing with Armory is you can develop in two ways, at least right now. Uh, you can use the Hacks programming language, or you can use nodes directly inside of the Blender game engine. So if you are looking for a successor to the Blender game engine, you like the idea of developing your game 100% inside of Blender and using Blender's node-based architecture to control your game logic, well, Armory might be a great choice for you. Uh, but there are a few caveats. Now, the first one, as I mentioned, we go way on back to the beginning of this video all two minutes ago. And I mentioned there was a certain lack of updates on this channel. Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is pretty obvious. If you head on over to Armory 3D and head to the news page right here, here we go. So here is the most recent news for Armory. You can see, let's go, the most recent, this is basically just an echo of the tweets that the main developer makes. So it's about Armory Paint 0 0.7, Armory Paint, 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 and noticing a theme here yet? So the majority of his update, oh, here we go. So new Armor video update was in May 31st of 2019. It was the last time we got any updates on Armory. Everything else has been about Armory Paint. Now, um, sorry, I gotta stop calling that Armor Paint. Uh, now, Armor Paint itself, I did a hands-on video of it just recently, like a, within a month or two ago. I will link that down below. It is a really cool product, and it makes a lot of sense for him to focus on it because of algorithmic buying substance. Sorry, um, algorithmic substance being bought by... Um, Adobe, everyone's favorite company. And with that purchase, a lot of people started looking for an alternative, and there aren't a lot of alternatives. There's Quixel, and there is Armor Paint. So with a lot of people looking for an alternative to Substance Painter, it made a lot of sense to work on Armor Paint. Now, Armor Paint, again, is powered by Armory Engine, so while he's working on one, he's dogfooding the other. So it does lead to developments. The problem is, if you don't do news releases like this, or let's head on over to the forum for a second, here's the new release set. So the releases category, you'll notice the last update we've got is Armory Paint 0.5, which by the way is the version I used to create that tutorial series you saw below. And this was last updated in July of 19, uh, July 19th of 2019, I think. Wait a minute, 28? Let me see when this was actually done. So there hasn't been a news post in on Armory for quite a while. Yeah, September of 18th was the last formal release. Now this doesn't mean there haven't been any releases September 18th. This is the last time there was any kind of build notes or instructions or details on what actually changed. And he actually did really nice release notes back in the day, which was quite cool. Um, and then this completely stopped. Now, if you are developing an open source project or engine, if I can caution you on anything, if you want attention to your project, if you want me to cover it on my channel, do change logs, do release notes, do formal releases. And don't do them too often, by the way. So it, it's got to be enough in there to justify a five plus minute long video, but it, it, it's it got to be organized. I have to know what changed in it to be able to tell other people what's changed in it. And when you stop doing change notes, you, you stop engaging with your community. So nobody knows what's new in each one of these versions. And you will notice if you go on over to the forums, the activity has just plummeted since. Um, 
So the weirdest thing is there has been a new update and that's actually where this video came from. So a week ago, there was an update about what is coming up with Armory. Now, the weirdest thing is on the forum itself, it wasn't posted. So the lead developer isn't posting on his own forum seemingly anymore. And instead, it was one of the users that noticed it as a GitHub issues article. So, you know, on the one hand, it's really cool to see... Um, an update there so that we're actually getting the updates that I'm asking for. The problem is, again, how, how you're engaging. If you, if you let your own community die, that, that's troublesome to be sure. So anyways, this was announced and you're gonna notice from these comments, some of kind of where I'm coming from with my, my thoughts towards this too. Are we witnessing the all too common target drift that can kill a project? And ugh, I'm a little worried about that personally. So I'm gonna head on over to the actual announcement. So here we are, it's over on GitHub as an issues thing. The developer, again, so eight days ago, made this post to describe what is happening in 2020. Now, first off, they have moved to a new naming convention uh, that is number-based instead of version-based. I actually like this. I, I like informative release names, but it's either here nor there. So we now have Armory 2020.1, uh, I think it's being called. Um, so I'll just read this. With 2020 already in full swing, I would like to outline sub plans for the Armory architecture in the upcoming year. By the way, I'm gonna start throwing words at you like kink and caw. I'll come back and explain what they are in a few minutes. Um, so we got, uh, they're going to move the rendering to Graphics 5. Graphics 5 is a newer API being developed in kink, leveraging modern graphics APIs like Direct3D, uh, 12, Vulkan, and so on. Uh, as a result, by the way, this is mistake number one, um, support for Direct3D 12, Vulkan, Metal, and WebGPU will be a priority. I agree with that 100%. That is the future. Uh, once running smoothly, older APIs will be dropped. Oh, that's a big mistake. Ask Godot what they did with that one. So if you don't know, in Godot 2.0, Two, I think was the last release, um, they had an OpenGL ES2 renderer, which is great if you're doing things for like older mobile titles. And then Godot 3 released, they dropped it. They moved to GL ES3, and then they dropped the, um, the ES2 renderer. And then it became an unviable product on like 75% of uh, mobile phones plus older machines like uh, HD 4000 4, or HD 3000, which is your MacBook Air type games. Um, titles. So dropping older graphics APIs, you do pay a huge cost and that is losing like half of the Android marketplace and a decent number of desktop computers. So if, if you're going like chasing like the high end gaming, fine, that, that'll work. But if you're trying to get the person that bought their computer at Walmart to be able to play your game, this is a mistake. And trust me, um, Oh, uh, Godot made that mistake and then they, they, they fixed it with Godot 3.1. So, uh, yeah, I, I, anyways, so moving on, um, implementing ray tracing for dynamic scenes right now, Armory has DXR support, but only handles static scenes. This is kind of cool. So you can get real time ray tracing in uh, dynamic as well as static scenes. Uh, but the, the thing I would caution here again, is this is chasing, uh, I think the last I saw was 11% of the desktop market GPU or dedicated GPU market. 11% has DXR. Now, obviously that's going to change over time, but 11% of uh, desktop and if you throw in mobile, uh, that's like maybe 2% of the market. So be careful what you're chasing there. Uh, but it is cool to see that is the kind of technology that is the future. So, you know, cool feature there. And then here's where, again, I start going, uh, low level parts of armory, like iron to C. Uh, this is going to take advantage of multi-threading uh, coupled with Graphics 5 API. As a result, Armory will not be dependent on Kaw, uh, but will interface directly with Kink. I'll explain these in a sec, so don't, don't worry too much. Uh, as an extended version of Chrome, which, also, which exposes Armory-specific functionality from C to Hatch.js will be developed to accomplish this. And then Armory Traits, Armory Traits being one of the way you basically attach traits to objects in Blender uh, with the Armory game engine to program them. So you're still gonna be able to write them in Hacks or JavaScript like usual, or any language that compiles down to WebAssembly. And then for web development uh, or web deployment, WebAssembly and WebGPU will be used. So that is the future of Armory. That is what they're doing. So the biggest thing here is they're moving to modern GPUs and dropping old ones. They're moving to ray tracing, which I guess is cool. Um, and they're going to replace all of the guts or the plumbing of Armory. And that one is, uh, you know what, there might be some really good legit tech reasons for this, but there's also a lot of things to be afraid of. Again, it goes back to this comment, are we witnessing the all too common target drift that can kill a project is pretty bang on. So what they're doing, there is an interface layer. So right now, um, 
the armory engine is built mostly on top of uh, Kaw and um, iron. Iron is this interface layer between its own C data types and the exposed layer that they've got right now. Um, and to explain a little bit about Kaw, so let's head on over one more. So Kaw is available to actually kink Kaw code, um, a very Mortal Kombat K theme going on here, are all from the same guy. It's Rob Dangerous, and I actually did a video on this. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but if you're interested in learning about the entire technology stack, head on over to Kaw.tech. But what we've got here, um, you can basically think of Kaw like a, a game framework for hacks that is kind of the equivalent of SDL or SFML or something like that. It's an abstraction layer and game library, uh, kind of on the lower end level thing, but it allows you to be very, very cross-platform. So you see here, if you go down to the details of it, uh, you got a number of different features, GLSL shaders, 2D, 3D, graphical fallback. So if you're working on web, for example, HTML5 canvas fallback, um, it's, it's built on Ka. You've got a lot of language and platform support. So you can see right here, you've got pretty much every renderer language and platform you could ever think of. And again, this is built on top of the Hacks technology stack. Well, underneath it, especially if you look at um, Ka itself, one of Ka's dependencies is Kink. So you see here, they updated Kink. Now, Kink is the low-level layer. So again, on over here, so you can see, again, same guy, Rob Dangerous, same overall uh, repository. Kink here is a modern low-level game library and hardware abstraction layer. Now, this is a C library that Ka itself builds on. I know this entire thing is getting kind of confusing. If you're interested, I did a layer on what Ka is all about. So in that video, I will link it down below with the other videos. So if you want to learn more about Ka and the technologies involved, you can do so. But essentially what's happening here is Armory is moving down an abstraction layer. So right now, they work on the Ka abstraction layer. What they're going to do is replace all of the guts at that level and instead go down to the C layer. And then they're going to depend directly on kink. So they're kind of, instead of using, I guess the closest analogy I can think of is they're, they're moving from, uh, from say SDL down to OpenGL, but there's still one layer of abstraction in there. So that's not a great or direct analogy, but they're moving down closer to the hardware. And there, there could be some very, very good technical reasons behind this. What I find scary here is this is going to introduce a whole new world of bugs. Existing bugs are not going to get fixed. It is going to take who knows how much development time. And in the meantime, end users are going to see no real benefit from this. I don't know if this is going to hurt their community. I can, I can see where there could be some negatives here for sure. Um, there's, it's actually really reminding me of another very interesting project I've tracked in the past. And that is this one called Lux. Now Lux is one that I kind of, it, it's funny because it actually followed the exact same um, order. It was originally a hacks library uh, and then the guy wanted to port it to another programming language that I'd never actually heard of, whatever the new and shiny language of the week was. And then I think it's been ported again. To be honest, it was about four years ago and, you know, to give you a timeline, about four years ago, I gave up on following Lux. This is the first time I've actually been to the Lux webpage in about 40 years because I just saw the, the guy that's developing it saw something new and shiny and switched to it and something new and shiny and switched to it and then something new and shiny and switched to it. And the result is that mm -hmm. six or seven years after the beginning, we now have a C++ based that was using Ren, uh, which was using Hacks, which is still in the preview coming soon stage. And I don't want to see that happen with the Armory game engine. So that's where we stand right now. We're going to see a lot of uh, internal and plumbing changes while the architecture is redone at the bottom of uh, the Armory game engine. We're going to see older renderers being deprecated eventually, which again, I told is a gigantic mistake. And the worst part is I think we're just going to see a lot of delay. And I don't know that this is a community that is going to weather that. But then again, I don't know how much of a community has grown around Armory. Uh, it was going really, really well for a while. Then they run into some crowdfunding problems and then the, the forum updates kind of stopped a bit and then seemed like the emphasis was moved over onto the armor paint project. So uh, I, I don't know what this is going to do for the future of the engine. It is a great project and I, I'm assuming it is going to continue to be a very cool technology stack and I think it will ultimately make armor paint 
a more professional and polished project. But I don't know if this is going to help the adoption of the Armory game engine. So what I would think that I can safely say is don't expect a lot of content on this channel because there's not going to be a lot of changes in the Armory engine for quite a while, unfortunately, due to these changes. I'm not sure what you think of this. I don't know. I know I'm coming at this a little bit negative. It is cool to see him finally do a bit of an update. I do highly suggest more updates, more transparency into what's going on. And I know you hate it. It takes away from development time, but it also allows people to, you know, know what's going on with the engine and consider it, adopt it, expand upon it, maybe support you financially and so on. So that lack of transparency definitely hurts you. Anyways, let me know what you think of the changes to the Armory engine, the move down from the hacks layer to the C layer, the delays that are going to be involved in that, the deprecation of the older game engines or the introduction of the new ray tracing path. All told, what do you think about the future of this project? Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.